Cover Oregon has not been a success, and someone is stepping up to the plate to do something about it. State Representative and gubernatorial candidate Paul Richardson says Governor Kitzhaber isn't dealing with the real issue. He was unable to lead the state and help make sure that we didn't have another failed program by the state government. What Kitzhaber wants to do now is to go back and try and solve the problems, which Richardson says is the wrong move. Now he's saying, well, we've got a contract to have this reviewed. Well, to review Cover Oregon at this late date is to waste money. It's too little, too late. Right now, Oregon remains the only state without a working health insurance exchange, but that could come to an end next month with the legislative proposal to close Cover Oregon and replace it with the national exchange, which is currently in 33 states. We're going to allow the federal exchange, which is now working, to provide the enrollment capacity for Oregon insurers who just want to have good insurance. Richardson says enough is enough. There just comes a time when you can't keep making excuses. You just need to cut your losses and move on. Justin Phillips, KPNW. With the 2012 Tracktown Olympic Trials Report, I'm Justin Phillips. Last night was the final Tracktown Tuesday event held at Oakway Center in Eugene, and it's clear the community is getting excited. I think we're nine, ta- nine days or ten days out from the uh, Olympic trials. Uh, somebody asked me today how many hours. <laughs> we're not down to hours yet. Oregon track and field coach Vin Lanana mentions an impressive number, 31. 31 athletes representing this area with the Oregon ties or OTC members of the OTC, it's going to be a fantastic Olympic trials. The Olympic trials started historic Hayward Field on Friday, June 22nd, and there's something for everybody. There's entertainment each night. There'll be the video screens that'll be up there. We still have some small number of tickets that are left for the uh, for the actual trials in itself, but it's going to be fantastic. With the 2012 Tracktown Olympic Trials Report, I'm Justin Phillips on News Radio 1120, KPNW. An Oregon House committee has passed a bill allowing ranchers in zones of chronic wolf depredation to kill wolves in specific circumstances. The bill allows um, the taking or killing of of a wolf um, in a couple of instances. Uh, One, if there's a um, imminent threat to to any uh, human being. Oregon House Representative Brad DeWitt says the bill also deals with the well-being of livestock. There's also a provision to allow the taking of wolves in the instance where the wolves are uh, caught in the act of, uh, of attacking livestock. Wolves can also be killed if they're in the act of chasing livestock. DeWitt says they hope to see the bill on the House floor in the coming weeks. There's a uh, work session in the Rules Committee. Generally speaking, um, a work session is uh, is scheduled so that that bill uh, can be voted on uh, in the committee and, and sent to the floors. The ranching community is happier to have a bill going through the process than in the long run will make their job safer. I think it's important that um, uh, when um, problems, significant problems, Um, are voiced by the residents of this state, uh, no matter uh, where they may live, um, uh, that um, the legislature needs to be addressing those problems. Justin Phillips, KPNW. An accident 10 miles east of Springfield along the McKenzie Highway caused quite a mess on Tuesday morning. It was a a single vehicle crash involving a log truck that was loaded, and uh, he... It was just his vehicle. Uh, He took out a couple mailboxes and a power pole and a tree. And the road was completely blocked for about an hour and 15 minutes. Sergeant Eric Judah from the Oregon State Police says the driver, Richard T. Norwood, 75 of Eugene, also took out some mailboxes. Lost its load. It wasn't a rollover. It was still upright. Norwood told police he didn't know what happened. As far as I know, the driver uh, received minor injuries and was transported to the hospital. Justin Phillips, KPNW. From the KPNW News Center, here's what's going on. A record class of nearly 5,900 students is graduating tomorrow at Oregon State University. We have over 1,000 students receiving a bachelor's or master's degree, and the rest of our um, graduates are undergrads. Rebecca Mather, the registrar at Oregon State, says that 600 more than last year's group, which was a record. The class of 2014 ranges in age from 19 to 78 and includes graduates from 35 of Oregon's 36 counties, 49 of the 50 states, and 55 countries. A hiring panel has recommended a Kaiser Permanente official as the new director of Cover Oregon. Some candidates dropped out after the state decided to drop its website and use federal technology. 
Among those fighting the 10-square-mile wildfire near Bend are 143 prison inmates. The Oregon Department of Corrections put the minimum security inmates on the fire lines and expect they'll work through the weekend. The prisoners are accompanied by 15 staffers. Justin Phillips, KPNW. Brentwood Estates, elegant homes and carefree living, created for those who know what they want out of life. Brentwood Estates, elegant homes of distinction, provide carefree living with personalized service. Minutes from the U of O, Lane Community College, and Autzen Stadium. It's the Next Step Reuse Radio Show with Lorraine Kerwood and Jeff Garrison, sharing views on the events occurring inside and outside the world of reuse and recycling. Celebrate Oktoberfest at BMW of Eugene with special pricing on all All in-stock certified pre-owned BMWs through November 2nd. Now you can get behind the wheel of the ultimate driving machine at substantial savings. Lane County Letter Carriers, in cooperation with Food for Lane County, invite you to donate food to the Letter Carriers Food Drive the first two Saturdays in December. The Letter Carrier's Food Drive provides thousands of pounds of much-needed food for local families and individuals facing hunger. At SoftQ Community Credit Union, it's all about you. You want information and choices, like student visas, first-time auto loans, mortgage programs, personalized debit cards, online bill pay. SoftQ Community Credit Union. This is perfect. The sunset, the white sand. You know who I wish was here? I kind of like that it's just us two. Ken! Ken, really, our farmer's insurance and financial services agent. He helped us save and invest for this vacation. I'm going to give old Ken a call. But honey! The Oregon basketball team landed in Indianapolis yesterday with the 1939 championship trophy with them. If you're planning on boarding a plane to the Sweet 16 matchup with Oregon and Louisville today or tomorrow... Flights out of the Eugene airport are already heavy from spring break travelers, and you may not find a seat. Catherine Stevens, airport director, suggests another route. My advice would be to use a travel agent. They really know the ins and outs of those systems very well. Um, Or just going on to individual airline websites and checking that. You can get to those websites through my website, which is flyeug.com. Fly safe and go Ducks. Justin Phillips, KPNW. A three-year collaboration will begin today between Oregon State University's College of Agricultural Sciences and the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science to develop attachable sensors to bumblebees to track how they search for pollen and find nesting sites. Bees are very important for pollination. A lot of people have heard about the colony collapse and other issues with the honeybees. And so that increases the interest in native bees, including bumblebees, for pollination. Sajaya Rao, an entomologist in OSU's College of Agricultural Sciences, says there's still a lot to learn. There's a lot of unknowns about native bees, native bumblebees, that we feel we will be able to answer some questions once we have the sensor. Our current method of tracking bees is actually pretty simple. What happens now is we use indirect methods, you know, bees go so fast, so we can put little numbers on the backs of bees, but once they go away beyond our eyesight, we don't know where they're going. Each sensor will consist of integrated circuits that broadcast wireless signals about the bees' location and movement. The sensors will be powered by wireless energy transfer instead of batteries, further reducing weight and size. We need something that is so lightweight because we cannot afford to affect the flight of the bee. The bee's got to be flying normally with this thing on its back. The project will be supported by a $500,000 grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Justin Phillips, KPNW.